Alrighty. I'm recording. It's like the tenth time I've tried to do this because my computer... My computer's fantastic without trying to stream or record. When I'm in Lightroom, editing in Lightroom, which uses the GPU, and kick it over to Photoshop, um, which also uses the GPU, and I'm streaming or recording the screen, which also uses the GPU, things start to slow down, and it's very hard to do like the fine detailed edits in Photoshop when everything slow down. So I'm going to try it again. If it slows down, then I'll have to close Lightroom and save it, um, save it straight out of Photoshop. So it kind of changes the process a little bit. Usually I kick over Photoshop and then kick it back to Lightroom, save everything in Lightroom, and then export everything out of Lightroom. So in a larger set of photos, that would uh, definitely not work out. So anyway, so this picture is from Lisa Acuna, who sent this in through the group, through Soko Photographers, and she wanted me to see how, what my edits look like on this picture. And this picture is just about flawless as far as I'm concerned. Good exposure, it's a little hot on the head versus the body, but that's fine. The light, the way she lit this, she had a light at 45 above her shooting down. And then I guess she put a reflector below to, to reflect some of that light back up and kind of soften some of the shadows. But this picture at F8 ISO 100 shot with a Sony a7 III is super sharp. Uh, tack sharp on the eyes, the whole face really. Um, even the tip of the nose is in focus with, at F8. So anyway, uh, so I just have the one photo loaded up. Um, that's all she sent. She sent a link to more, but this is the one photo she sent and I'm gonna throw some edits on there. I'm gonna do one of my basic edits. Um, these are all presets that I've built over the years, different weddings. California is one of my favorite. It has more of like a kind of a muddy skin tone, which I like. Um, just makes everything look more true to what you actually saw and maybe even just a little uh a little warmer a little kind of creative i guess creative edit um it does have a matte most of my presets do have a matte look i like the matte look it kind of softens the shadows softens the blacks even softens the whites a little bit which actually this one because her face is so hot on the whites i'm going to put it all the way up just so i can get all of the detail uh, also, most of my presets have a radio filter, or three, um, and this is just to draw attention because I use uh, a mat with the curves. I use the radio filters to bring the focus of the image back to where I want it by adding uh, whites and blacks back to the, to the image. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. This is just bringing the whites and blacks back into that one section. So what that does is your eye is drawn to the darkest dark and the whitest white. So if I am making the, the whitest white and the darkest dark in an image where I want the viewer's eyes to go, it kind of just helps draw the attention, in this case, to her face. Zoom in, looks good, as far as nothing's blown out, and there's one more small one, right there, and because on this particular image, because her face is so bright, it's closer to the light, and the bottom isn't, I'm actually going to use a graduated filter and just brighten the bottom of the image up. So if I hold Alt, click Reset, start from scratch, we're going to increase the highlights, increase the shadows just a little bit, and I'm going to warm it up kind of to match her hair and face. I'll add a little bit of whites just to brighten that. I'm going to leave the blacks alone because I want the attention 
go to her face. And we add some contrast. All right, so just like that. Now there's, in this particular image, because the exposure's good, everything's good, super clean face, not a lot to, not a lot of details, or the details that I do wanna work on are so like tiny, it's actually way easier to do that in Photoshop. Lightroom is good for like spot removal on, Bigger objects, um, like I could easily do the lint and stuff here if I wanted, just by clicking that. And just click on that. It's going to do a good job of taking care of it. So I could do some in here, which I guess I will. So, just a couple little spots here and there. But not a lot. Very, very clean, very clean photo. Um, so, but because I know I'm going to take this into Photoshop anyway, I'm not going to do a lot of that stuff. So one thing I was messing with this yesterday, trying to get it figured out. One thing I did notice with this was that there was a lot of blue in the background and I really liked the blue. So I want to bring that back. Now this graduated filter is actually removing a lot of that blue. You can see where it's affecting, so it's affecting all of that on the sides. Push O, and that will show me what the, the effect is doing. So I'm going to, inside of the graduated filter panel, I'm going to click Brush. And if you hold Alt, it becomes a Subtract. So I'm going to get rid of all this red in the background. Because there is a contrast between her and the background, if you also hold control at the same time, Lightroom will try to pick what you're trying to select. So you can see how it, it didn't go on the shoulder and the hand there. You don't need to be super, super clean with this, but I'm trying to bring that blue back. So I'm just gonna run over this. And down here, her stomach kind of matches the background a little bit. You have to excuse me, I'm not, uh, I'm not really a, a teacher. <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to talk and edit at the same time. So anyway, what I did was got rid of all the red you can see from the background. So the background will be as blue everywhere um, as before. So if I push O, you can see kind of what that, now it's only affecting her, brightening her up. But the background remains blue, which is what I'm kind of going for here. So I'm going to increase the brightness of the blue and the aquas. Those are the two. None of the other colors really go. I think there's a little tinge of yellow and then orange, obviously in the face. Now to really, oh, I also want to bring back the sweater. So this particular preset has a lot of the reds turning orange. So like her lips and her sweater are or more towards the orange side. So I'm gonna bring that back and bring the reds back in. I might even be able to increase the sweater. It's a little much on her lips. Mm, I'll go ahead and do it and I'll fix it in Photoshop. But I'm gonna increase the reds, bring the sweater back, maybe brighten up the sweater just a little. And now split toning, you can see is adding a lot of that warmth. And the way I have this set is highlights I have set to like a, a yellowish orange and shadows I got set to the same. So if I set the shadows to the blue, it's really going to bring out the blues. Then I'm going to lean it more towards the highlight side. That's what this bar does, the balance. And now you got to kind of play a little bit. Nope, that's not going to work. So I want her to be warm, so I can go back to this graduated filter, can warm that up just a little bit more. Mm. And I might add some more radio filters, which I will reset, and I'm just trying to warm her up a little bit. 
set this to 100 so it feathers out nicely. Then I would duplicate that by right clicking on it. Drag that down. And I'm just going to warm that up. The graduated filter is doing a little too much. I want it more right there. Now, hopefully that balances it, but I'm going to go down here. Usually I don't mess with color calibrations after I've... Uh, I mean, the preset is the, the color cal calibrations down at the bottom, so I don't really mess with it too much. But I want to see if I can bring that blue out a little more. without messing her skin tones up too, too much. I'm going for a really poppy, contrasty kind of look to this. And then go back up here and we can pull down some of the Tones. Is that? Hmm. So the aqua was kind of like messing with the blue just a little bit. So I'm going to pull that. Maybe it's this. Uh, barely. You probably can't even tell on the screen, but I can see it. All right. So right about there. Let me see what we can do down here. These are just tiny little adjustments just to see. Just trying to pop that color a little more. I view color calibration as kind of like that's where you just experiment and see what what you can do. Might even add a little black there. Take away some clarity. I'm gonna do the same up here. Increase the shadows, highlights, clarity. <clears throat> All right, so that took care of a lot of what I wanted to do. I got the blue. Highlights don't look too, too blown out. Might decrease some of them. If you ever want to like smooth out skin real easy in uh, in Lightroom, you reduce the clarity and it's going to smooth out that skin a little bit. That way you don't you keep a, you keep most of the texture, but you can smooth out the skin just briefly. If you want to really smooth out skin, you got to go into uh, Photoshop. Um, so one more thing I'm going to do in here real quick before going into Photoshop is mess with the eyes just a little bit. And so I'm just painting on the eyes. Um, I don't want it on the eyelids or eyelashes, so I'm just subtracting that from there. Okay, push O, and let's see what we can do. You never want to go too, too crazy on the eyes. I'm pull some of that red in from the eyes. Add some texture. Add some white. A little bit of black, just to, a little extra to draw your attention to the eyes. So it's super, super subtle. I don't even know if you could see it over there. 
Yeah, I guess you can. And the eyes are a little off balance. This one's more in the shade than this one. So I want to add a second one just to this eye, just to the bottom part. Just to kind of balance the two. So that's about all I would do in Lightroom and this you could be done with this picture and there's a couple other if I was going to send it directly out of Lightroom I would like fix the there's a dent on the lip um, one little pimple there and there's a couple hairs I want to take care of like I don't like this strand necessarily um, I don't like these hairs under the neck <clears throat> She has a couple tiny little, like this is super nitpicking, but she has a couple tiny little, like a scratch on her hand or something that's not really distracting. But since I'm making this video, I might as well pull it into Photoshop and uh, do those little details like that. So, seems to be a little cool. A little warmer. Right there. All right, so the next step is right click and edit in Photoshop 2020. And then that goes over to Photoshop. And now let's see how bad this lag is. Oh, it's not bad at all. But a little tiny, tiny bit. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, make a new layer, get in the habit of making a new layer in Photoshop. That way if you totally jack things up, you can totally fix things. So I'm gonna hit J on the keyboard and I'm gonna start with the Spot Healing Brush Tool. And just run through. And I'm just doing little taps on, I'm using a Wacom tablet, little taps to kind of take care of the areas that I don't necessarily like. Um, this isn't the best tool for skin, but it's a good starting point. And then if I smooth out something too, too much, I go back with the, the other healing brush, which captures texture and everything else. And it just helps with skin tones. But this one gives you a good, this one's the one you use for like hair and you use for all of that. And this, like I said, Unless this was for a magazine or something and I would never go into this much detail in like a wedding picture just because there's no way I have that much time to edit all of the pictures like this. Might do one or two like super detailed, but for the most part, no, that's bad. Uh, but this one, I'm only doing the one image, she only sent the one, so this isn't a bulk edit, this is nitpicking and doing fine, fine details that normally would not need to be done and nobody would notice unless they're zoomed in at 160-200%. So, I'm just going through, pulling anything I don't like. And just doing small taps. If you do a line, then you kind of create that a line like you'll see. You can see like a smooth line in your in the picture, zoomed in anyway. She has a couple eyelashes in her eyeball or above it that I don't like, that I want to kind of take care of. And so that looks good, lips look good. Smooth that a lot there. Go to the finger, she has a little nick right there on her finger. And she has a extra skin hanging right there, a little bit right there. Like I said, super, super nitpicking. Some peach fuzz we can get rid of. All right. So that looks to be all of the detail on the face. Why 
That might have been a freckle. Generally speaking, don't get rid of freckles. Don't get rid of permanent uh, natural flaws. It kind of makes everything more realistic. Or you can. There's some people that, some of them look really good. They're making like, they look like robots, I think, at the end, or mannequins or something. I like skin texture. I like noise. I like all that stuff. All right. A couple lip creases I want to get rid of. Dots there. See, like that? I think that's a mole. Uh, so I'm going to leave it. Alright, so you can spend forever. But one of the, so one of the main reasons you do a separate layer when you start doing all this stuff is so you can go back and you can see the work you've done. So if I'm looking at her face, I can unhit, hide this layer. You can see, hopefully you can see, it's like so, so subtle. You can see a little bit in her lips and a little bit um, in the chin, but you can barely see on here. Let me zoom in. That's before and that's after. And now, I'm going to do this on the same layer, but I'm going to uh, clean up the lips or clone stamp. Just hit Alt and then paint in kind of where you want it. I just want to kind of extend the shine to the lips. And get rid of this line. Wacom, the Wacom can be a little finicky when it comes to this stuff because I'm not clicking very hard. But, just work through it. One thing to avoid if you're using, so I'm using the clone stamp tool. So one thing you want to avoid is repeating patterns. Um, yeah, they become obvious, especially in like bushes or Thing. This, where I'm at, I'm zoomed in at 200%, so it's like nobody, hopefully nobody's nitpicking pictures to this detail, to this level, but you never know. So, there's a couple details that I've noticed zoomed way in. So that's the lips, you can see the before and after. I just want to soften them up, brighten them up, increase the highlight. There's a little line, there's like a cross line going this way. Let's get rid of that. Go. Uh, <clears throat> so there is some yellow on her teeth. So I'm going to use an adjustment layer and let's see. Whatever that one is. What is that one called? I don't know the names of these. Selective color. So I'm going to use selective color and where, 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 where? I'm going to go to yellows and I'm going to pull all the yellows up. And right now I'm just looking at her teeth. before and after so it brightens them up a little bit there might be some red in there maybe that's what I'm seeing and ignore everything else okay so that definitely whitens it but I might need to go into the hue and saturation link it to that by holding alt and click the line right in between and then the hue and saturation that it's called a clipping mask that means the hue and saturation is only affecting the layer directly below it so then I can decrease some of that uh, overall saturation on just the T so go back to the selective color mask hit control I that's kind of invert it so now the only thing visible is what I paint in white we go back to the teeth there and just paint that in.
that's barely barely whitening it so you can come here and you can see it might be too much we'll see when I zoom out oh 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 made it too tiny so there is the before and the after on the teeth you can see I just kind of took that yellow out so it makes it look like she has real bright white teeth if it's too much Kind of balance it too. I'm going to drop this down to like 75% and just do that. Now uh, I'm going to do another uh, selective color. I'm going to select the blues. And right now, so I am just focused on her. If I can zoom in, that would be great. Oh, the lag is getting real. So right now I'm just looking at her eyes. I kind of want to do the same thing where I brighten the whites, but definitely the highlights of her eyes are blue. Or cyan maybe? It's not really doing a whole lot. Probably gonna take a couple. All right. What color is in there? It's not green. Nope. Oh, that would be why. Never mind. So, I wish there was a. There we go. So I had to reset that. What I I. When I brought in the select color, it was on the first one, so it kind of clipped it to the other one, and I was only messing with the teeth. But now we got it. Okay, so we'll go to the blue. Opposite of blue is yellow, so we're gonna add some yellow. Let's see what that does. Take away some magentas. And my goal here is to make the highlights in the eyes white. Uh, okay, so, I uh, guess I shouldn't talk about a mouthful. Do the same thing with hue and saturation, clip it to the selected color, and reduce the saturation. I don't want to go too much, because it's also going to affect the whites of her eye. So we can undo and see what that is doing. It's kind of, is there green in there? Doesn't look like it. There's not. Uh, let's see. Blue. It's getting better. I don't think there's any magenta. There is in her eye. I'm looking at the whites in her eye and the highlights. Okay, we'll call that good enough. Good enough. Again, invert that. Grab your brush tool and make sure you're on white, and then draw that in. And I'm just gonna go over the pupils and that highlight. And that's. A super subtle difference. Then we go back to the hue and saturation. We can go way, way down. Just to make that white. But, I also went over her eye, and I want her eyes to be super colorful. So I'm going to color that back in with the black brush. Alright, so... There's the before and after on her eyes, super subtle, just getting rid of some of that blue, and there's the before and after on her teeth. And then all together, oops, there's before, and there's after. Again, super subtle uh, changes. So now let's move on to the hair. 
Um, so I'm gonna grab the click J, and it's gonna bring me back to the um, spot removal tool. So I don't like this hair, so I'm gonna get rid of this hair. Oh, we got some lag. Lag is so upsetting. Nope, that's not gonna work. Get rid of that hair, and then I'm actually gonna fix her eye because I messed it up. Oh, this lag. Super upsetting. Ugh. Okay, create a new layer, I don't know if I backed out of the new layer or not, and back on the spot removal brush, let's see if I can get rid of this hair easily, if not, I'm going to skip it. Oh, that lag, it's starting to lag, it's upsetting. Wish there was a way to not have. Ooh, ooh. So you can see with that spot healing, uh, not spot healing, the healing brush, that one, it brings the texture back. And now I'm gonna go back to the S. To the stamp. And we'll call that good. It's not great, but that lag is fucking upsetting. Let me try one more time. I'm gonna leave it. Uh, go back to the spot healing brush. Let's see about this hair and what we can do. So this hair kind of bothers me. Let me get rid of that. See how easy that is? It's easy on a one-off image, but when you got a hundred images, like somebody has tan lines, and they're like, can you just remove all my tan lines? No, no I cannot. That's too much. It's easy to do, but that's too much. So, the, just cleaning up these wandering hairs a little bit. And usually, like in a sweater, it doesn't matter, especially in the shadow like that. Um, as far as the pattern, sometimes you'll mess up the pattern with the spot healing brush and then that's when you need to use the healing brush. So that one's doing fine. And there are, at the top, there are tools like the type you're using is content aware, create texture. Hey, maybe that'll do it. Let's see. Yeah, it does the same thing. Content aware is where I usually leave it. Um, but content aware is usually where you leave it and it's gonna try to take into account the textures and everything else. There's a little bit of more in here, but that's all right. It's not terrible. So I'm just getting rid of like lint balls and random hairs. I don't know if I like that hair or not. I don't. That hair is distracting to me. It's so bright in comparison to the hair next to it. So. We're gonna get rid of it. This tool used to be worse than this. Um, they've definitely improved it so you can go larger areas. See, but like there's an example because I am going over a larger area where it just kind of smooths out the texture of the sweater. Hopefully you can see that. So then you take your healing brush, copy the texture over there and just kind of trace over it in spots. 
and change it up, add variety to the spots. And that's just gonna bring that texture back. And you could try to use this um, on the hair itself. It's doing such a bad job. You can try to use this on the hair itself, but sometimes it'll get blurry and weird. So I start with the other brush and then flip over to this one. You could also use this if you wanted to get into it and get rid of the the bra. You can see the bra right there. So you could use it to get rid of that. I don't even think I created that spot anyway. Uh, okay, so back to the other brush. Maybe, there we go. So looking at the sweater, just like I said, nitpicking tiny little details that normally would not matter. Music. Uh, let's see. From a distance. So there's a but there, this is where Lightroom fixed that one ball of lint. And now that I'm doing the detail, I can see it. So, going to fix it. All right. Oh, I just made a spot. All right, so back to the other one. Spot healing brush. Uh, these hairs, well, there's a couple. Couple loose hairs here. Ooh, the lag is real, the lag is real. My wife's gonna be mad when I go to upgrade my computer again. Luckily, it's only $500 this time to get the better processor, but this is a GPU problem, so I think I need a better GPU, which is not $500. It's a little more than that. All right. So now that takes care of most of the, the easy loose hairs. Before I go into the larger, like I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this hair and those hairs, but I want to do that on a new layer because I don't want to have to undo everything I just did. So, new layer, and this one is going to be the bulk of this hair to see about getting rid of it. See how good Photoshop is? Not bad, not bad. Good job, Photoshop. There's a bunch of loose hairs here. Try to get rid of this one all in one. And did all right. There's not a lot of noise at ISO 100 and flash lit. There's like no noise. That's why in Lightroom I didn't even touch noise. I didn't do anything with noise or luminance or anything. Just didn't need it. Like I said, this photo is near perfect in every detail as far as proper exposure and all that fun stuff. So now this big boy, let's see. I know it could be done. I did it in one of the other ones. So. Let's just, let's go nuts here. See what Photoshop can do. Come on, Photoshop. I'm just gonna color over the whole thing. It's probably gonna really mess it up. Boom, hey, wow. Wow, that's impressive. Also yesterday I was messing with the selection tool, the new ones like the, over here on the right, right? Oh, right here. It says remove background and select subject. Those are actually super good now. Um, 
they work fantastically. And I was able to pull her completely off the background, even the little hair strands, all of it. So this just takes time to get all the little flaws and the new flaws you create and the little hairs and all that stuff. And because it wraps around her shoulder, I kind of want it, I want this bump here. Where I don't mind it. Because it looks like her hair is kind of wrapping around the, the shoulder. So I'm fine with that. Okay. So now, man, I don't know if you can see it or not. I wonder if I can make... I'm not going to do it. I could see it. I know you probably can't. There's where the hair was. It just didn't blend it well. There's like lines you could see. Might be able to kind of see that line. I can't tell. Um, but I'm going to go real wide on the stamp tool, real soft on the brush, and just kind of kind of blend all that in a little better. You just gotta be careful because it's a gradient. So like as oh, as it goes down, it is uh, getting darker and darker. So uh, I can't see lines. Oh, I just messed that up. If you don't know how the stamp tool works, if you see that little plus, so you hit alt, click on where you want to select from. So like if I wanted to select this sweater, I'd click right there. And then wherever I'm drawing is going to draw that. And you can see the little plus on the right. That's showing you where you're selecting from. So then you're just taking that. That's how the stamp tool works. Pretty basic tool. All right, so that looks good enough for now. Uh, now we're gonna go up here, go back to the spot healing brush and remove any flyaways that I see that I don't like. Come on, computer. So like this big flyaway, go ahead and get rid of that. Get rid of some of these, get rid of these. Get rid of this guy. And might as well get rid of that. You don't want to get rid of all the flyaways, otherwise their head becomes a helmet. So that's never good. But some, they're just distracting. they like too bright, like this one out here. It's a little too bright, just sticking out. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, that one too. Okay, I'm fine with that one for now. Let me back out and see. Oh, I'm not fine with it. I'm gonna get rid of that. Right. This one's a little crazy. These are all just crazy hairs. This one's a little crazy. Really? All right, so that's good on the hair. Do I want to get rid of that? I do this hair here and that hair. Get 
rid of all of it. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, see, I kind of made a helmet hair there, and I'm, I'm fine with it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Who cares? All right. So now I just take one last look. Make sure there's no like weird hair, bright hair that's kind of bothering me or anything like that. Um, just want to get rid of this maybe. And like I said, this is all super nitpicky. There is none of this is necessary. This is me being nitpicky because the image is already. The image is already done. I'm just picking at it now, I'm trying to do extra stuff and see. I would normally never do this much on an image. Uh, unless there was, like I said, unless it was for a magazine or something. I'm gonna see about cleaning these up. Sometimes it can get messy, uh, like it doesn't match the hair behind it, but it's such a small part of the image, does not matter. All right. So, yeah, I'm good with all of that. Good with all that. Oh, actually, there's one there that I don't like. This guy. Like, oh, there's a new one I want to get rid of. Stupid hair. All right. So we're going to call that good. Yeah. So now, let's see what we started with. Nope. What we started with and where we're at. Took away the hair. Took away the distracting hair. Uh, little flyaways and the details on the face. Okay. So, technically this one is is definitely done. Um, but, since I was trying to bring out the blue, let me see about really bringing out the blue. And I know there's some cyan in there. Take away the yellow, brings the blue out. And there. And now you can see how it's uh, kind of messing, probably because I have the matte look, um, but it's kind of messing with the shadows in her uh, shirt there. They're kind of blue easy to fix if you want that bright blue you just go to the mask grab your brush tool <coughs> excuse me make that bigger or not uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 make that bigger pretty big and I'm a soft and I want to paint it black just to anywhere where there's shadows on her, I want to kind of paint black. Just to hide that weird blue texture, or the blues that I brought back, I want it out of her shirt. And only affecting the background. And you could like create a mask and get this super, super detailed, but this is gonna be a quick edit. I don't want to do all that. So 
there. Now I'm only affecting the background. Um, and now let's say I wanted her sweater to be brighter. So you grab another uh, color selection tool and we're gonna add some magenta, some red, and pull some cyan. I just want her sweater to like pop off that background. Something like that. Let's see. Something like that. Um, and then you're going to go invert and go back to your brush. Hit X or not. Come on. There we go. Hit X to bring it to the white and then draw on the shirt. This one I'm trying to avoid the hair and the skin as it will make all those, uh, make the hair kind of orange. It's already a little orange. She has red hair. And it'll make the skin really orange and yellow. So I'm trying to avoid too much on the skin. And I'll go back and clean it up here in a second. Just want to get the, the base kind of down. Get the elbow. And these are all, I don't want to say they're subtle. But you don't have to, you don't have to be super, super careful with this. And then hit X again, and now I'm on the black, and I can just kind of clean up anywhere that I think it might have bled into the hair or the skin that I don't want. I'm still using a soft brush. And then we could, let me see. No, I'm going to do my own. I'm going to do a different one for the lips. I kind of like them where they're at, but I might change the... I might make them darker to kind of more match the shirt. So we're going to go another adjustment layer. And we're going to do reds again. This time just focused on the lips. Looks about right. Again, control I and X. We need a real small brush. And just paint in paint in the lips. Just to match the sweater. A little bit, but not be too, too bright. Back out. I like the before and after on that, so either one works. All right, so now we got the blue kind of popping way out. I like it. It looks good. So that would be it. And then you'd push Control S, and that would save it into... Lightroom. And then it's back in Lightroom. And then in Lightroom you could look at it again and say like, do I like the tones? Do you can come in here and you could, if it's too cool, you can warm it up. You can reduce the highlights because when you export it back, it creates another raw file in Lightroom that is clean as far as all your settings and your presets. So you can come, I don't think it needs anything. It looks good to me. And then you'd export it. So there's that one. Let's see what else I got here. Here's one I did. I changed the background, selected the hair, uh, 
put a design on the shirt all done in Photoshop and I think I took the background and actually added it to her lips so there's that one um, let's see and then I also did some more subtle kind of like calm ones but so that's what I got that's the edit in Photoshop this is just like a basic edit from there you you can go nuts I don't know if you want to get into that it's already been 55 minutes holy shit takes a lot longer to explain and do it we could test let's test these uh, Photoshop if I go new layer select subject oh yeah don't go new layer go control alt shift E if you're on a Mac it's who cares uh, so now you're on the new layer push select subject it's gonna do a good job it's gonna do a pretty decent job then select one of your selection tools and go to select and mask and you can kind of see what it's doing so then you refine the mask grab all those little hairs and the textures and everything and my computer's gonna hate me but they this tool used to suck it used to be so difficult It's still not, eh, it's not perfect, definitely better. And all those, man, I don't want to wonder, I'll get that after. So I'm just refining the edge and this is going to mess things up a little and then you just fix it. All right. So once you think you have a good selection, then you export as a selection and you could do a new layer, you could do all kinds of stuff. What I'm going to do is click on the mask and create a mask. So if I go here, add a new layer under it, turn that into white, you can kind of see your selection. Then you go into your layer mask which is that. Oh. You can see where I kind of went over and I kind of like wrecked it a little. So if you take your brush, you're in your layer max, mac, layer mask, and then you're just gonna draw in, you want this to be a fairly hard brush. We're gonna go 76. And just kind of clean that area up. Get as close to the edge as you can. You don't want to go over because then you're just bringing that background back. Again, Wacom. All the way Wacom. The best thing ever. Um, to the hands, I'm actually not going to worry about getting on that edge just because I think it's actually going to help. And down here, it's not terribly, terribly important either. Man, you can see, like, usually the brushes are pressure sensitive with the Wacom. They're not right now. Which is crazy. This is so weird. Alright. Uh, I think there was some in the hair. The hand looks fine to me. Shoulder a little. I'm gonna fix this hair. But with the hair, I'm actually no. Uh, yeah, fuck it. You don't want to get. Don't go all the way to the edge. There's a trick. I'll show you here in a second.
Alright. So that looks good enough to me. Um, you're still in that layer. You can actually burn the hair. And that's just going to clean up those edges just a little bit. You lose a little bit of the hair detail, but that's fine. It cleans those edges. You can see that. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom way in so you can see it. Boom, boom. Drag this over. See that black right there that's in the white? You, you just burn that away in the layer mask. And it just kind of cleans it up. It's a quick, easy way to clean up your masks. All right, so now we're back, we removed the background, got the hair. Now you can literally put any background you want. Go to Google and we're gonna say, cool wallpaper. Um, go to images. Don't steal images, unless it's for fun. Stealing is fun when you're not getting paid. Just kidding. Um, that one's kind of neat. So you're kind of looking for one. The one I found with that paint one was kind of cool because it was dark on the bottom, kind of like the picture where all the lights coming from the top. So that one's not bad. Um, dun 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 dun. We could try that one. It's kind of weird. No, I don't like that one. I want like paint. So let's do paint. Cool paint wallpaper. Ooh. This one will work. We use that one. Oh, dang it. Copy image. Go back to Photoshop. Control V. And then turn it how you want it. Computer is mad at me. All right, and then throw that behind her. Ooh, I don't like that spot. Okay, there was a spot behind her head I didn't like, so I just stretched it out to make it go away. All right, and now she's on the background. This background, because it is a web image, might be might need a little bit of a blur so the noise matches and that'll do it and now you can see there's a little bit of blue in her hair so if we go back to the layer mask and we burn it it should actually we'll, we'll use the brush and just kind of paint that in Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So, burn is gonna be better. That wasn't super clean with my mask, anyway. Dang it, oh well. Cleaner the mask, the better it's gonna turn out. Most of the other stuff turned out fine. Uh, but there's that background. And then let's say... So you got the background, now you want to throw an image on a shirt. Just for shits and giggles. So we will go with... A Trump painting. And you want it to be a painting. Just to match the theme of the paint. So, something like this. I want one that's different. Let's 
let's see. I'm looking for one with like a white background. White works a little better. Let's use that one. Mm, it's not really painted though. All right, let's find. Oh, no, 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 back up, back up, back up. Trump painting white background. This is always the longest part, finding an image you want to use. Let's see, Trump painting. There we go, I'll use this one. Just for fun. Copy image and then control V to paste it. Kind of set it how it would go on the shirt. Um, and then you, I don't remember if I did that or not. Let's see. Now we're gonna use blend if. This one's a little, if you've never used it, it's a great tool. But you just pick the underlying layer, which is the shirt. What should I put on there? What to put on there? Let's just do finger. Fuck you. Painting. This is the hard part is finding a good one. Paste it, size it, and a little bit of rotation. We'll see where this lays on our hand. I want it to be visible. So we're going to go multiply. Good enough. You got that white border, but we're gonna get rid of that. Ah, oh, there's some glitch. There's some glitch in either OBS or Photoshop, whatever. But when you, you like how it launched off to the side. But anyway, all right. So now we're gonna use Blend If. Let's see just what that does. I want to have some of that shirt texture through the colors. Looks like an old faded shirt. Mm, none of that really matters. Let's 
So, just like that. And then I'm gonna move this to where I want it, which would be like here. And then you create a mask. Create a mask and get rid of that border by painting in black. And get rid of that. And she's got her shirt design and that's on there the last thing to do is go to that and go to warp and then warp is new in the new updated Photoshop you see these little lines up here to split it so if you split it that way you want one at the highest point split it again one up here split it again oh can you only have two nope Split it again there, and then we want to split it here, and here, and here. All right, and then you take, oh, hold on a sec. Oh, can I undo it? No, nope. damn it. Unlink the mask, and then do it. So that way the mask stays the same. So okay, split it here, add a split here, add a split here, add a split here, and one up here. Okay, and now you're warping in individual sections, it makes it easier. And this just gives it that subtle shape um, like it's an actual t-shirt being stretched with the body. So there, that's it. That's how you do, like, if you want to do the tattoos. I did one with tattoos. Let me see if I can pull that up. Uh, here. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, no, no. So I did one with tattoos, and I did a shirt design, but I added the tattoos just to make it look same concept as I just did with that shirt. You just warp it, get it, use blend diff to kind of match the skin and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it. Simple on that one. The background is I created it. It's actually this design on a shirt just repeated and put it in the background. Um, and that's the original edit. So you can see it's fairly close to the original edit. Just barely edited. And then that is that edit. And, and then there was that edit with that shirt design. And that's it. So anyway, now we can control save again. I go back to layer? Nope. There we go. So we go to Photoshop and we'll check. There's the original, well, that's the edit from Lightroom, and that's the final image. Boom, so we got that one, that one, that is the Lightroom edit, and the 
that is a different Lightroom edit. And that's the original. So we're original Lightroom edit. Photoshop edit one and Photoshop edit two. That's it. So that one was fun. That one, like I said, image is flawless. So you just kind of get to do whatever you want to do to the image, create whatever you want to create and have fun. So that's it. That was a long ass one image edit. How long was it? An hour and 16 minutes. Good Lord. Later. Send more images. If uh, Send me stuff where you're struggling. Like, this is fun. I love doing that. But send me stuff where, like, how do I swap a sky? How do I... I'm having trouble with skin tones on this particular image. Or I need a face swap from these two family images. This guy blinked or this guy whatever. Um, so I need to take the face from here, put it over there. Send me those kind of projects that I can actually work towards a... a, a a point I guess versus me just kind of wandering around Photoshop and playing around doing whatever I want to do so if you have some images you can use we transfer to send me the raw files uh, I could try JPEGs although I hate JPEGs with passion so send me raw files using we or drive or whatever else however you want to send them if they're not over 25 megabytes I think you can send it in through messenger or maybe even the Facebook comments like Lisa did um, but yeah that's it see you on the next one later <laughs>